Hey everybody, this is Candice Adewale of The Love of You Lifestyle, and I am here to talk about the five misconceptions of feminine women. I think the first misconception is probably the biggest one, and that is that there is only one way to be feminine. I have spoken to so many women over the years as a feminine arts educator and life coach, you know, just educating women on how they can embrace the power of their femininity. And the biggest resistance comes because there has been this ideology that there is only one way to be feminine. And that is usually like that leave it to beaver mom from the 1950s wearing pearl necklaces and aprons, and that just simply isn't true. There are seven feminine archetypes, and I think that as I have grown as a person, I've learned to be a lot less judgmental, understanding that there is importance in all of the feminine archetypes, and that most women who live in their feminine or are predominantly feminine in their energy have you know, that one or the other, that will be that dominant archetype. And the archetypes are the mother, the maiden, the queen, the huntress, the wise woman, the mystic, and the lover. And there is a lot of information online about the different feminine archetypes but I suggest you Google the feminine archetypes if you have any questions about them. But it's very interesting because in learning the, the feminine archetypes, you can kind of see the rainbow of feminine personalities that there are. And you can kind of see where you fit in. For me, I'm the queen and the lover. Those are my two dominant uh, feminine archetypes personalities. And I've learned to just embrace that instead of trying to fit into a feminine mold that just doesn't feel authentic for me. So that's the first misconception. Okay. The second uh, misconception is be consciously feminine means you don't believe in equal rights for women. Oh my God. It is quite possible to believe that you can be feminine and also simultaneously want equal rights for women. Now, I personally do not identify as a feminist just because there's a lot of negative rhetoric around being a feminist that I do not embrace. And I really believe in the NDA harmony and there are a lot of things that I'm not necessarily caping for or fighting for when it comes to the feminist movement. I also feel like some of the, the issues that are fought for in the feminist movement are a little bit frivolous and pointless. And so I do not identify as a feminist, but I very much believe in equal rights for women, and I believe in women having choices, which leads me to the next one. Number three is that we want everyone to be barefoot and pregnant. Now, I know that there is a lot of talk, especially amongst religious groups, a lot of Christian groups speak about femininity, and a lot of that has to do with being a mom, being a stay-at-home mom, be more traditional. And while I personally am more traditional in my values, I do believe in a woman's right to choose the path that feels good for her. I also believe that women should be educated so that they can have a wide range of choices. There used to be a time where women had no choice but to be a stay-at-home mother, but to do certain things. And so that's why I totally believe in women's rights and I believe in a woman's right to choose her path. So we don't want everybody to be like um, 
barefoot and pregnant. So that's, you know, we want you to be educated, have businesses. And what I believe is that women can have a lot of the things that they want to have, but it needs to be in alignment with their call to be a wife and a mother if they choose the path of being a wife and a mom. So number two, the second misconception, top misconception of feminine women is that we think we are better than women who live in masculine energy. I did an interview earlier this year with a woman who is very much against um, women who teach about the feminine arts. She feels like it's bogus. She feels like it's a scam. And um, that is because in certain circles, women who live in their feminine energy make it seem like it's wrong for a woman to live in her masculine energy. There are some women who are just masculine in their energy. That's their predominant energy. And there's nothing wrong with that. There are some women who are more masculine. They have a little bit of feminine. There are some that are just predominantly like 80% masculine. And that's fine. That it just what it is, what it is. It is an energy. And so that leads me to the last one, which is number one. That if you are feminine, that you are docile, a pushover, and you are weak. And that could not be further from the truth. Could not be further from the truth. I believe that there is a great deal of power when you embrace your feminine energy. I believe that women have a great deal of resilience. And I think the beauty of embracing a consciously feminine lifestyle is because of all the power that you have as a woman once you begin to practice the principles of femininity every single day. And when I say that, I'm not necessarily talking about wearing dresses and going to tea, which that very much, that very well can be that, but I mean by actively embodying feminine energy principles into your life, like like being uh, collaborative, like uh, being passionate, like seeking pleasure and being creative and vulnerable and receptive and being graceful and filling your home and your yourself and your whole aura with beauty and all of those beautiful things, all of those beautiful attributes that are feminine in their energy. So I just want to go over those five uh, misconceptions of feminine women. I hope that I've cleared it up for you all. Again, my name is Candace Adewale of The Loving You Lifestyle. Be sure to subscribe and like this video and also follow me on Instagram under The Loving You Lifestyle. All right, you all take care and stay blissfully feminine.